A major university is an incredible place of learning, creativity, and accomplishment. As president of Oklahoma State University, I have the opportunity to explore and experience what makes our campuses unique. I'm Burns Sargas. Come along with me, and together, let's go inside OSU. This weekend, the Cowboy family will gather at Boone Pickens Stadium or around their TVs to watch one of the top rivalries in college football, OU and OSU. It's Bedlam. Football is just one of Oklahoma State's many successful athletic programs. Wrestling, golf, cross country, basketball, and baseball have all won national championships. In fact, OSU has won 52 national championships, which is the fourth most in the nation. Achieving athletic success requires solid leadership and great facilities. Leading the OSU effort is Mike Holder, who has been athletic director since 2005. I sat down with Coach Holder to discuss the state of OSU athletics. Well, let's just start with the timely, the timely issue. We've got Bedlam coming up here. You got any predictions? Well, you know, I always predict a win. Yeah. But my percentage isn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> but I always think this year is going to be better than last year. So uh, let's hope we can figure out a way to get a W against the Sooners. I guess optimism is kind of a key quality in your position. Yeah, you're not going to last very long if you're not an optimist. In, in, the, in terms of the overall, uh, the overall uh, attitude uh, of the uh, Cowboy Nation, how important is that game? Well, Kyle, Kyle Ray likes to tell me that that's critical for enrollment and uh, you know how critical enrollment is for the current and future success of our university. So it's evidently a big deal. And uh, we'd like to win more of them. He said when that happens, you see more OSU gear out at the Walmart and various department stores and you see a lot more of it out on the streets and in the malls. And so. Uh, uh, we haven't had enough of it, and hopefully we're going to do something about that going forward. How do you uh, ensure that uh, that our, our cowboys and cowgirls have a, have a good chance? Well, the first thing is you've got to get the right coaches. So you've got to have a real leader, a difference maker, uh, that can uh, sell a vision and recruit the kind of athletes that it takes to win championships and then coach them up once they get here. And then there has to be a commitment on the part of the athletic department to provide, provide the resources. That's the, the budget to do the travel and recruiting and all that, that entails, scholarships. And then also on the facility side, you have to put a facility out there that makes a statement that uh, that sport is important to the university and gives uh, something to attract those great athletes from all over the world. So, you know, you've hired a lot of coaches, what, uh, and you've been a coach. What are you looking for in a, in a coach when you uh, evaluate the candidates? I'd say primarily character, you know, the values that we all hold dear. I think the things that make uh, Cowboys special, whether it's uh, the OSU variety or the Old West, you know, hard work, uh, honesty, integrity, all those things that, uh, uh, I don't know, conjure up good feelings uh, about one another. And uh, so I look for that in a coach. If they're trustworthy and I think they're going to get out and play by the rules and work hard, uh, things will usually pretty, work out pretty well in the end. The problem is identifying those personal qualities in a short interview or short period of time. And unless you have personal knowledge of them or trust someone that's a good friend of theirs, it's really hard to find out what really matters about the candidates you're interviewing. Yeah. The, um, the, the, the kind of gap place between character and winning is wanting to win so much that you do break the rules and character will trump that so that's why i, I would agree with you that's uh, that really is important hiring anybody uh, for anything yeah you know winning's important every place but at least at oklahoma state university it's uh, not more important than doing it the right way so do you get into the weeds with the coaches when you see maybe the recruiting's not going like it needs to or the or the performance on the quarter of the field or what what I really don't get too much involved. I think you hire a coach, let him do the job. That's what I uh, that's what I appreciated when I was coaching golf. So uh, I'm not going to – if I have to tell them how to do their job, I'll probably need to get a different coach. Let's talk about the, the building explosion and uh, what we now call the Athletic Village. Uh, that really was a 
incredibly audacious vision that you had to really upgrade uh, our facilities from top to bottom. Well, it's long before I was the athletic director. I, I, unfortunately, I had a good friend, Boone Pickens, that started making a lot of money, and I sold him on the idea that a lot of that dilapidated, as, and to some, in some degree, not all the homes were, but a lot of uh, substandard housing over there on the north side of campus create, created an opportunity for us to maybe acquire that and at least provide a canvas to paint this uh, picture of all these facilities over there. And uh, he agreed. So long before I was athletic director, we set about trying to acquire some of that property over there for what uh, would end up being our new baseball stadium, a tennis center, a Sherman Smith training center for all sports, uh, an indoor practice facility. Uh, we don't. We didn't build the new Neil Patterson soccer stadium there, but we certainly had the the land mass to do that. We felt like the current location was better. But and you built a track facility over there. Track facility. So it's just a dream, a vision. You know, uh, at the time, pretty aggressive, probably uh, crazy to even think about that. And they acquired. I think we bought close to 100 acres over there and then ran out of money and had nothing to do, couldn't do anything about it for four or five years, unfortunately. So we're really behind what I had envisioned would be our schedule at the time. And let's talk about the opening of Obreit Stadium. Well, you know, I, I can't say enough uh, in the way of thank yous to Cecil Obreit. Uh, not even a baseball fan, really, never really played this sport or anything to buy into the vision and step up to the plate with $35 million gift. Uh, extraordinary but I, I'd like to think that the dream of what that might look like and what a game there might you know be able to might uh, the experience of going to a game there might be like I, I'd like to think that the reality is going to exceed the dream well how will it be different from Allie Reynolds Stadium's experience well you know first of all we're going to have some parking <laughs> <laughs> that was the problem trying to get a fan base in Allie P Reynolds there's absolutely no place to park and I, I, we've been frustrated for years with that. And our, the, the following of our team, I think, it reflects the frustrations because we probably only sell about six or 700 season tickets for baseball right now. So you're going to have parking close by. Uh, we're going to have 3,500 permanent seats. And we're going to have all the modern amenities, concession stands, nice uh, chair back seats, and uh, not a bad seat in the house. You so can actually walk clear around the stadium. 360 right? degree concourse. And we're don't gonna you have, have room for tailgates and then yeah, barbecues there? And yeah, we think we're going to have tailgating in the outfield inside the stadium. We think we're going to do some unique things. But the overall theme has been families. You know, the if you heard Josh Holliday's opening press conference when he got the job or if you've heard him talk about uh, his uh, – childhood he was actually raised at Allie P Reynolds Stadium and all the things that that did for him and that's been the inspiration for a lot of what we've done at Obreit Stadium in the way to try to bring families into the stadium entertain the youngsters and bond them with OSU baseball and Oklahoma State for life so when will it open March 20th in uh, 2020 but the season starts earlier now, yes doesn't it will. We're so, going to play some early season games in Alley P. Reynolds, and then when the weather gets warmer and we feel like our turf is up to speed, then we're going to move into the new stadium. You've, you've done a lot of work in my backyard uh, behind the Wilhelm House in the cross-country course, and we're hosting the Big 12 championships this year and, and the national championship next year. Well, actually the regionals this year, President Hargis, oh. and then the national championship next year. Well, that's got quite a feather in your cap. Well, all our caps. You know, it's hard to get a national championship on a campus. Uh, really, the only opportunities are indoor track, outdoor track, uh, cross country, men's and women's tennis, and men's and women's golf. The rest of them have outgrown campus sites, and so they're off in neutral facilities. Or like Omaha, they go for baseball there every year to Omaha, or you go to Oklahoma City every year for softball. So pretty unique, and we've built venues and all these sports to try to track those national championships. And then talk just a little bit about the Greedwood Tennis Center and uh, the, you're hosting a national championship there. Yeah, we're going to host the national championship men and women uh, this May in the Greenwood Tennis Center and uh, it's world class. Uh, I think it's going to be well received by all the contestants and we really want to kind of set a new Stanford standard for hosting. 
uh, and really benefit future championships in that sport. And then also, we're, uh, selfishly, we'd like to get it back multiple times in the future. Let's talk about what's left. I said that you, okay. you pretty much had done it all, but you, you've got still some big dreams. Yeah, we, we've got to do something for wrestling. I, I tell people all the time that Gallagher Hall was built in 1938. It was named after a wrestling coach. And uh, from that day forward, I don't think we've really done anything specifically for wrestling. So we're going to do a significant upgrade for wrestling as far as workout and training facility. I can't tell you when that'll happen, but we're every day trying to raise the money for that. And then when you do envision do, that would be uh, on the east side of Gallagher Iba Arena and where we call Hedgefield right now, we've got plenty of space to put it out there. And I think it might become the new front door to the arena itself and really needs to make a statement that the heartbeat for wrestling in the whole world exists in Stillwater, Oklahoma, right next to Gallagher Iba Arena. And then the next thing would probably be an indoor track uh, just south of our current track facility and a, a venue good enough to host the national championship. That's what I envision. And then probably upgrade softball. We really haven't done anything for that since 1999 or 2000 when it was built. And then we'll need to get back around to football and all the other sports and take care of the facilities that we built. Any thoughts of uh, adding sports? Not right now. We need to be able to fund every sport we have um, at a level that allows them to compete for championships. But uh, that being said, uh, what I'd like to do if we have uh, some more revenue in the future, I'd like to add more opportunities because I believe in the experience of student athletes and how valuable that is in their future. So what sports would those be? I know I get volleyball is mentioned a lot. Right, to we'd me. probably add volleyball. You know, we'd probably need to start on the female side because of Title IX. Any so, other likely sports? Uh, you, you know, maybe, um, you know, cheer and palm, uh, not palm, but cheerleading, that's pretty competitive. Tum tumbling, that may turn out to be a sport someday. Uh, women's wrestling, I think mm -hmm. it's uh, – you got the greatest wrestling program in the world, and the female wrestling is growing nationwide and worldwide. With new facilities and top-tier talent, it's an exciting time to catch an OSU game. If you haven't seen the Cowgirls or the Cowboys in action, you should. For schedules and ticket information, go to okstate.com. We recorded our interview with Mike Holder in our Inside OSU podcast studio. To hear our extended interview and subscribe to our podcast, go to podcast.okstate.edu. I'm Burns Hargis. We'll see you next time on Inside OSU.